Today I'll be sharing my top travel tips to make your trip to Iceland an unforgettable experience, especially since you'll be visiting during my favorite time of year, summer. While the winter in Iceland can also be magical, Icelanders will admit that there's nothing quite like an Icelandic summer. Having lived here in Iceland my entire life and having worked in the tourism industry for the past nine years, assisting and hosting thousands of travelers, I'm excited to share with you my insider knowledge in this video. So whether you're a first time visitor or a returning traveler, I've got you covered with my expert advice. And to make things simple, I've divided this video into these four chapters. So without further ado, let's dive into my best travel tips for Iceland in the summertime. Now it is possible to divide the Icelandic summer up until about two seasons. So we have the early mid summer, which is the midnight sun season. And then we have the later part of the summer, where it's northern light season. During the earlier part of the summer, May, June and July, it'll be very bright here since we have the midnight sun. And during this time, our sun technically does set, but you'll barely notice it. You can be here in Iceland during midnight, one, two, three in the morning, and it'll still be bright out. And then we have the later part of the summer, which is when our northern light season begins again. I would say anytime after August 15th is when our sunset is starting to set earlier and earlier and earlier and starting to get darker and darker, making the northern lights visible again. Late August and September as well can be a great time of year to see the northern lights. A lot of travelers come here to Iceland December, January, February. They wanna come mid-winter to maximize their chances of seeing the northern lights. But August and September, the chances of rainfall, any storms or, or snowy days are a lot less and all these things block visibility of the lights. So I've actually seen some of the best northern lights of my life late August, early September, since the conditions can be really good. Tip number two is that summer in Iceland is peak season for seeing whales and seeing puffins. Now you can see whales in Iceland all year round, but during the summer is when the chances of whale sighting goes up drastically. And when it comes to puffins, you can't see them during the winter here, but starting beginning of May up until August is when about eight to 10 million puffins migrate to Iceland, making Iceland one of the best spots to see puffins. And the beauty about whale watching tours and puffin tours is that a lot of them depart from the old harbor in downtown Reykjavik, which will most likely just be five to 10 minutes walking from your hotel, hop on a boat, sail out, where you'll either see some majestic whales or some cute puffins. Tip number three is that when you land here in Iceland, you're actually not landing in Reykjavik, which is our capital and pretty much where you want to be for your stay here in Iceland, but you'll actually be landing in Keflavik International Airport, which is about 45 minutes driving from Reykjavik, the capital. Now I have mentioned this tip in a previous video, but since so many commented on not having a clue that they wouldn't be arriving to the city, I wanted to mention it in this one as well. But basically, when you fly to Iceland, you're flying to Keflavik International Airport and not Reykjavik International Airport. And it can be a bit confusing because some flight tickets will actually say Reykjavik International Airport, but that is our domestic airport, which is located very centrally here in Reykjavik. Now, when it comes to getting to Reykjavik from Keflavik International Airport, there are basically three main ways. One is to grab a taxi. There's always a long line of taxis outside the airport. Number two is taking a rental car. If you have a rental car while in Iceland, you can in most cases pick it up at the airport. And then number three, you can take the fly bus, which is just a big bus that goes from Keflavik to Reykjavik. I think it departs every 30 minutes. You can get tickets for that ahead of time online or at the arrival hall when you arrive. Tip number four is that you'll be arriving to Reykjavik about two hours after your flight lands. I'm very often asked, I get an email, hey, where our flight lands at six, when can we estimate arriving to the city? And a good rule of thumb is estimating about an hour getting through customs, picking up your bags and all that, and then another hour getting to Reykjavik getting to your hotel, checking in. So if your flight lands at 6 a.m., you can pretty much estimate arriving to Reykjavik at 8 a.m. For example, tip number five is that when you arrive to Keflavik, if you'd like to have any 
wine or beer or something like that along your stay, maybe to have at your hotel or Airbnb accommodation, I would 100% recommend buying it at the airport in the duty-free section. Basically here in Iceland, we have one of the highest alcohol tax in all of Europe, making alcohol a bit pricey. But in the duty-free section at the airport, it's tax-free. So I definitely recommend grabbing some bottles or some beer in the duty-free section at the airport before heading to Reykjavik. So tip number six is that when you're booking your accommodation, I recommend booking it in downtown central Reykjavik. Now the reason for this is that the downtown central area is super walkable and if you're staying here you're close to everything everything will be within walking distance whether it's restaurants or shops or cafes or bars or pickup locations for the tours and we sometimes do have guests that book their accommodation for Grindavik or for Keplavik 45 50 minutes from Reykjavik area uh, and oftentimes those accommodations will cost a little bit less but if you factor in the cost of transportation to get to and from the city every single day, but also the time, it's simply not worth it, especially for a short stay here in Iceland. Seventh tip is that everything here in the central downtown Reykjavik area doesn't open until 11, 11.30 a.m. And this goes for most restaurants and shops here in central downtown Reykjavik. I oftentimes see, I'm walking here on my way to work, I see some travelers walking around, just kind of looking for anything open. But in reality, things don't really open up until about 11, 11.30. This is all year round, not just for the summer. And my last Iceland travel tip is that there's no need to buy water here in Iceland. If you go to the grocery stores or if you're at the airport, you'll see water bottles everywhere. In my opinion, it's a big waste of money. Since every faucet here in Iceland will have fresh, cold glacier water for you to enjoy free of charge. So don't waste your money on bottled water in the stores. So next chapter is my perfect summer travel itinerary. Basically, if I had a foreign friend coming to Iceland for the very first time, they would say to me, hey Dan, you can plan my entire stay in Iceland. It's all up to you, but just make sure it's unforgettable. And this would be my recommendation. Now with this itinerary, you're experiencing the very best that Iceland has to offer in just four days. Day one, your arrival day in Iceland. Like we talked about before, your flight lands at Keflavik International Airport. And if you're flying in from the US, you're most likely landing at either 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. There you have to pick up your bags, get through customs, and then drive to the city, where you'll check into your accommodation. And like we talked about before, highly recommend staying in the central Reykjavik area. And your first activity here in Iceland will be the Reykjavik Food Walk. It's the food tour that we here at Wake Up Reykjavik host. It's the perfect first day activity to get such a great feel for Iceland, its culture, and its amazing food. Now the Reykjavik Food Walk is the highest rated tour in Iceland on TripAdvisor. And on this tour, you'll meet a fun local guide, explore the city, visit all these amazing local restaurants and hidden gems to enjoy incredible Icelandic food. And this tour is packed with food. So there's no need to grab any breakfast or anything like that before the tour. You just show up hungry and ready for an awesome experience. On this tour, you'll hear fun stories about Iceland and learn practical tips that you can use throughout your stay. And this is why this is the perfect activity to kick off your trip here in Iceland. And our first tour of the day starts at 10.30. And we have a departure happening almost every single hour from 10.30 to 5. So you can check our availability and pretty much just book the tour that suits you best. But I would definitely recommend booking it with as much notice as possible because a food tour more often than not does get fully booked in advance. And this is especially true during our summer months. Now, after the Reykjavik food walk, you're nice and full, you wanna digest and relax a bit. And the perfect next activity for your first day here in Reykjavik is the Sky Lagoon. Now, it's a very new lagoon, just opened here a couple years ago in 2021. And the beauty about it is that it's so close to the central Reykjavik area. It's only about 15 minutes driving. So whether you have a rental car or just take a quick taxi ride, it's super close, super relaxing, very beautiful. And especially if you get the Pure Pass and they have a nice sauna, some cold tubs, some warm tubs. So no better way to relax in a food coma than in a geothermally heated lagoon. Now I would estimate the time in the lagoon from start to finish to be about two to three hours. So when you're wrapping up there and returning to Reykjavik, 
you're most likely getting hungry again. So you want to head back to the city to grab some dinner. Now we here at Wake Up Reykjavik, we host the Reykjavik food walk every single day. So we consider ourselves to be professional foodies. So if you need any recommendations on where to go, or where not to go in regards to dinner, don't hesitate to send us an email. I'll link to it here as well, info at wakeupbreakup.com. And I'd be more than happy to help out with some awesome dinner recommendations. Now, since this is your arrival day and you've had a packed day of the food tour, Sky Lagoon dinner, you'll most likely be a bit tired. So at this time of the day, I would either recommend walking about, exploring the downtown Reykjavik a bit, or simply heading back to your hotel to rest up, recharge your batteries for day number two. Now on your second day, you'll be doing the South Coast Small Group Day Tour, which is perfect since it starts from the Reykjavik area, the pickup most likely very close to your accommodation since you're staying centrally. And from there, you'll drive the South Coast of Iceland, stopping at all of the highlight sightseeing spots along the way. Now this is gonna be so much fun since you'll be seeing amazing waterfalls, the Black Sand Beach, the small coastal town of Vik, where you can also grab lunch. So it'll be a full day of fun and sightseeing, and you're gonna love it. Now the South Coast has a lot of sightseeing. So the tour itself is about nine to 10 hours in total. And you'll most likely be arriving back to the city somewhere between six and 7 p.m. Now when you arrive back to the city, you'll most likely want to head back to your hotel get changed, get freshed up a bit, and then head out to grab something to eat. Now, you will be heading out to eat at an awesome local restaurant because we've already talked via email and I've given you some awesome local recommendations. Now, after dinner, you do have a few options to choose from. If you're tired, you can simply head back to your hotel. If you're in the mood to explore, you can walk around the downtown area. It'll be very lively and very bright since you're visiting during summer. Or what I would recommend is hitting up an awesome rooftop cocktail lounge called Petersen Svitan, where you can sit outside in the midnight sun and enjoy an awesome cocktail. Now, after a few drinks at the cocktail lounge, you're nice and tipsy, you're in a great mood, you'll head back to your hotel. No need to grab a taxi since you're centrally located and it'll be short by. And it also won't be hard to find either because it'll be bright outside. Now, this brings us on to day number three, or as I like to call it, your local day in Reykjavik. It doesn't have a strict schedule on what to do, but instead I'm gonna recommend a few awesome activities that I would enjoy doing. And you can simply puzzle together what you're most interested in doing on your local day. Now here you'll find my list of activities that you can do on your local day. You can check out Hatlingskirka, the big church here in the downtown Reykjavik area. It's possible to go inside, take an elevator to the top, and if it's a nice clear day, you can get one of the best views of the city. You can go swimming like the locals. You can visit Sundhöll Reykjavíkur, which is one of the oldest swimming pools in Iceland. There you can have a swim, check out the hot tubs, the sauna. It's a very nice relaxing thing to do and super local as well. Now if you're traveling with kids, I have two family friendly activities to recommend. First one being Hustira og Fjölskildu Garðurinn. There you can see and sometimes even pet some of the Icelandic farm animals and also hop on some of their fun rides that they have. It's about 10 minutes driving from the central area. If you don't want to go all the way over there, you can also visit the Reykjavik pond and feed the ducks. Now going to the Reykjavik pond and feeding the ducks is a super local thing to do. Most Icelanders growing up, including myself, would go there all the time with a big loaf of bread to break it up and feed to the ducks and the swans. It's a lot of fun and kids love it. You can also go out on a puffin or a whale watching tour, but these activities can be perfect on your local day since they do depart from the downtown area, the old harbor, and they only take a few hours. And we also have loads of museums to check out in Reykjavik, whether it's the Settlers Museum or the National Museum for some rich Icelandic history. And then we also have the Penis Museum, now I just know some of you will really enjoy that. Now if you're a beer lover and would like to try out some amazing Icelandic craft beers, then I highly recommend checking out Kalte Bar, located in the central downtown Reykjavik area. Now beer has only been legal here in Iceland for about 35 years. It was legalized in 1989. Since then, we've been crazy about beer and today, I believe we make some of the best beers in the world. Kalte Bar is from Kalte Brewery, the first ever microbrewery here in Iceland, founded in 2006. 
they make some amazing beers. Now if you enjoy escape rooms, then there's one close by called Reykjavik Escape. They have plenty of rooms to choose from and it's a lot of fun as well. So if you enjoy that in other countries, you want to try that here in Reykjavik Escape. Now if you're like me and you enjoy coffee, and you want to head to a cozy little coffee house in the central downtown Reykjavik area. There are plenty of good ones to choose from. My favorite is located right next to our office. And it's called Café Brensla. There you can get a nice chocolate croissant, cappuccino, and some board games there as well. Very cozy if you want to relax and grab a nice cup of coffee. Now hopefully with these recommended activities, you're able to puzzle together the perfect local day to enjoy on your third day here in Iceland. That brings us on our fourth and final day and since you're visiting when it's warm bright and basically the perfect conditions for some awesome sightseeing we're gonna end it with a brilliant small group sightseeing tour and for this day you can choose between exploring the golden circle of Iceland or the Snæfellsnes Peninsula both of these tours are absolutely amazing so I have no doubt you would have an amazing time with whichever tour you choose but in short the Golden Circle, a classic sightseeing driving route here in Iceland, where you'll explore waterfalls, the erupting geyser, uh, think about the National Park, you'll visit Fredheimar Tomato Farm. It's a beautiful tour. It's a, <laughs> it's a beautiful tour. It's a full day of sightseeing and it's a very popular driving route for a reason. And it's also possible to do another variation of this tour, which is the Golden Circle and Secret Lagoon combo tour. You'll visit all of the sightseeing spots of the Golden Circle, but you'll end the day at a very nice, relaxing, natural hot spring called Secret Lagoon. And then the other option, the Snæfellsnes Peninsula Small Group Tour. The Golden Circle and the South Coast Tour that we talked about earlier, beautiful sightseeing routes. They're quite common when it comes to sightseeing. The Snæfellsnes area is a little less common, a little less touristy, which makes it, in my opinion, a little bit more unique. It's filled with amazing sightseeing spots such as Snæfellsnes Jökull, Kirkjufell, Black Beach at Djúpalóns Sandur. Try saying that five times. And then the tour will also include lunch at a horse farm. So it's a very special, unique tour. It's a full day of sightseeing and it's awesome as well. And like I said, you can't go wrong either the Golden Circle or the Snæfellsnes. You'll have a great time whichever tour you choose. Now with all these tours, whether it's the food tour, South Coast, Golden Circle or Snipe Snes, they're all amazing. They all have great reviews. They're all small group experiences. And on our website, wakeupregio.com, you can see more info about these tours, but also the availability and booking calendar if you want to book your tickets. And on our website, you'll find the lowest price for each and every one of these tours. But since you're watching this video, you can also use the promo code SUMMER which will give you a discount on all these tours that we've talked about, but we also have some other amazing activities to choose from, which you'll find at wakeupbreakgiving.com as well. And the promo code SUMMER will work on them also. Now, the temperature in Iceland during the summer is warm. Well, at least us Icelanders think it's warm, since we're used to long and cold winters. June, July and August are the official summer months, but May and September can also be very nice. However, the average temperature here in Iceland during summer is only 10 degrees Celsius, which is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The absolute warmest it'll get is around 20 degrees Celsius, which is around 68 Fahrenheit. But when it comes to daylight, summers in Iceland are bright, very bright. June 21st is our brightest, longest day of the year. We technically do have a sunset, but it's just 24 hours brightness. So June 21st is our brightest day. July also a very bright month, but when August arrives, you start to notice the earlier and earlier sunsets. And around mid-August, we'll start to have pitch black darkness around 9 p.m. Hope that helps. Lastly, we're moving on to our packing list for a trip to Iceland during the summer, to the right. You can either take a screenshot or pause the video. Basically just some recommendations to look over when you're packing for your trip, just to make sure you're not forgetting it. And then our last and final chapter of this video, events and special dates taking place during the summer. Now the first special date to know about is the 17th of June, which is Iceland's national day, often known as our Independence Day. 
It's a public holiday and a day of celebration for Icelanders, marking the country's independence from Denmark in 1944. There will be parades, concerts and festivities held all throughout the country to celebrate this important day in Iceland's history. So definitely join in on the fun if you're here in Iceland during June 17th. Next very special day during this summer is June 21st, our summer solstice. It's also the day that we will be hosting our very first summer solstice yacht party. And this will be a three hour event where we'll be sailing around the Reykjavik Harbor area, enjoying the midnight sun, and by securing your ticket to the Wake Up Reykjavik Yacht Party, you get access to this exclusive event. Also some drinks included, live music, the team from Wake Up Reykjavik will be there partying with you, and it will be without a doubt the funnest event happening on summer solstice. So I highly recommend booking your tickets, it will sell out and I can't wait to see you. Next up we have Verslunar Manna Helgi or the Merchants Weekend, which is a popular Icelandic holiday which takes place on the first weekend of August. During Verslunar Manna Helgi, many Icelanders take to the countryside to hike, camp, fish or simply enjoy the beautiful Icelandic beautiful Icelandic landscape. During this weekend, there will be festivals happening all throughout Iceland. So whether you're staying in Reykjavik or somewhere outside of the city, I would definitely recommend checking out the schedule for the town that you'll be in on this weekend to see what's going on, because I'm sure you'll love it. The last event is Gay Pride or Reykjavik Pride, which is an annual event to celebrate LGBTQ plus rights and promote equality. It's one of the biggest events in Iceland, attracting thousands of visitors from all over the world. The festival usually takes place in the second week of August and includes a lively parade throughout the streets of Reykjavik, concerts, parties and other events. Iceland is known to be one of the most LGBTQ plus friendly countries in the world and Reykjavik Pride is a great way to celebrate and experience that. Now you should be all set to experience Iceland in the summertime. If you want to book any of the tours that we talked about in this video, I'll link to them in the description and don't forget to use the promo code SUMMER for an awesome discount. Now after watching this video, if anything is unclear or if you have any questions at all, write them in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer them. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I also recommend following us, <laughs> following us on Instagram. Until next time.